All right, we are going to start uh, while the data and uh, data is fine now. Okay, all right. So we have a lot of the stuff. Is the font big enough? Is the font big enough or not? One minute at the back. Shivam, you can see the font. Okay, so we will just have this. Uh, so these are some of the symbols that I put in for your next project as well. So we have this. So let's launch the option trader for crude oil. This is November 19. It's fine. Okay, this is okay. Both are fully visible. The yes. borders are visible. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have some of this stuff. We can see the the uh, the bid offer on the eyeballs. We have 42 day. Okay, guys. Let's be quiet here. Okay. So we are looking at this. And where were we in terms of so we covered in this uh, we looked at the option strategy uh, matrix yesterday uh, in the in the previous class which is this is where we were right so we figured out how you gonna proceed uh, in the case of options we have some particularly some we have some peculiar idiosyncratic decision problems for option trading so usually when we say for uh, for investment management when we come to the buy sell decision problem okay we can relate it to the underlying asset okay here if we have um, let's say I have yeah so this time I've loaded it and I'm not going to change the ticker because the network here may not allow so I've got Microsoft here okay you've got both the key factors uh, in your just we are doing a quick recap we've got both the key factors here in this chart you can see the blue line the mountain chart this is called a mountainside plot you know that right okay so uh, this the the blue line is the the blue area is the uh, is the Microsoft stock price okay and the red line is the ball at uh, the eyeball as you can see as I told you in the previous session as well you need to develop a feel for these eyeball charts you will notice that the eyeball charts diff have a quite a different characteristic from the underlying asset price chart have you noticed that if we took it up if you look at a very long-term eyeball chart like uh, uh, this is also this is from we make this a little smaller okay this is one of your tickers I think you have uh, do you have GDX as one of your tickers I, I put in all these um, I transferred all these uh, copy of option tickers so let me just uh, rename this just uh, yeah so the GDX is one of your tickers if you remember the GDX is an ETF it basically uh, holds stocks of gold mining companies okay and some of those companies are also engage in copper mining etc okay but mainly focused on gold and silver mining so this this is your GDX and the GVZ is the ticker that you can use I've tried to put in the eyeball chart tickers because for me it's very important to have long-term data when I mean, you're forming views on uh, on markets okay and the eyeball effectively can be treated also as a market and you'll find that typically for eyeball you will not have an opportunity it's very hard to form eyeball views okay what we've got here no this is actually like a whole finance chart what we've got here this is your GVZ the un, you'll have to use this uh, the where is the Sorry, we are roaming around here looking for the for the chart yeah this one so this is your GVZ this is corresponding to the uh, to the uh, GDX okay this is the eyeball uh, index for the GDX all right this is the eyeball index for the GDX uh, which is your GVZ so notice that the uh, what I'm trying to show you is that this is a fairly long uh, data series almost about 10 years of data so you'll notice about I uh, with uh, eyeball charts that they are they tend to be one of the ways you have you noticed that there is a difference between the 
the nature of the eyeball charts and the underlying charts have you noticed something about that if you look at this chart also if you look at even if you look at the Microsoft stock price chart and this here we have only about two three years of data on eyeball okay have you noticed that there's a difference between the nature of the two charts can you see that the Microsoft char stock chart the underlying asset price chart tends to trend quite strongly okay whereas the we one of the things we say about eyeball is that eyeball tends to be vol in general we talk about eyeball in general both h vol which you don't know yet what it is but uh, both h vol and vol in general tends to be more mean reverting can you understand the statement if we make this statement yes high variations not high variations more more mean reverting in the sense it tends to come back can you see that it's much more if you wanted to look at these two charts okay we have the ideal cyclical movement as a you remember your sine curve you remember the sine curve plot which is a nice harmonic i mean beautiful uh, symmetrical plot goes up and down it's the same boundaries are the same so if i were to ask you between these two charts the eyeball chart and the uh, stock price chart of microsoft which of these is more like a sine curve eyeball. it's the eyeball chart right so the sine curve is a classic example of a mean reverting chart because it does not go it stays within certain set bounds and it does not go out of range it keeps oscillating within the same boundaries okay so this that's why you can say it's mean reverting because you can see that it shot up here and then quickly came back it doesn't stay up in a sustained manner like the stock price can okay if you wanted to look at a if you really want to look at what is meant by a you know this uh, uh, what is meant by a long term uh, here if you wanted to put the microsoft chart here all right here if you see long term data for microsoft it's right you can see how strong it is okay so 136 this is of course now you can see it here okay so you can see how strongly this chart is trending this is not so mean reverting right so this of course we have cherry picked the particular example i'm just going to take a little less uh, this yahoo finance charts have become very problematic now in terms of display okay but the point you're getting the point that in case of underlying asset price charts so we're making a distinction between vol charts and underlying asset price charts and we're taking microsoft as an example okay so what we are trying to show you is that if we have maybe if i have this as a different kind of plot maybe if i have a line plot it will make life a little easier for us um, 136.28 still doesn't help us much yeah but it is a little better so you can see that when i'm looking at i'm using microsoft as a representative of the uh, underlying asset uh, price charts okay all underlying asset price charts and i'm using the eyeball for microsoft as a, a representation of the eyeball in general okay and you can see that the eyeball tends to be much more mean reverting means in the sense that whenever it goes up it tends to come down quite quickly you can say that yeah in fact if you calculate the volatility you may get a different kind of picture but what i'm trying to show you here we're not talking about the volatility when you're talking about variation you're talking about the volatility right in a way you're right in the sense that when the when the stock price is shooting up like this in this kind of a trend if you notice if you do a calculation of historical volatility as a standard deviation it's actually quite low because it's really kind of going up in a straight line okay so in that sense so we're not talking about that aspect of the movement right now what we are talking about is the trending nature of the movement versus the mean reverting nature of the movement okay so train uh, we are distinguishing mean reverting means it goes up and tends to come down quickly so that it it does not run away from the mean like this like what uh, say uh, microsoft has done here right are you following it tends to have pronounced trends whereas a mean reverting chart will be very much closer to the sine curve kind of picture where if it goes up and then again regularly tends to come down okay so this is what we say about volatility when you look at vol uh, try to develop a feel for the chart you will see that it's much more kind of like squig squiggly like a ecg kind of a chart which tends to be much more mean reverting so what we say is vol has a tendency to be mean reverting so spikes in vol tend not to be very long lived long lasting okay whereas if you see this movement in the microsoft stock price it's going up and it's kind of just going up like that okay so if you zoom out further hopefully you'll get some this 13628 will not disappear okay 
but anyway so you can see this basically so you can see that this is a very pronounced move in one direction so in ball what we are trying to say is just that uh, it tends to be much more mean reverting is this clear okay so just try to understand this point and try to develop a feel for these charts okay so these things are very important these are all very many insights which i can never really ask you an exam that's why i'm not a big fan of exams and exam scores and all that because a lot of the important pieces of learning important elements of learning can't really be captured in an exam i can't ask you like is wall more mean reverting that would be a kind of stupid question okay but so everything that is of value that is taught in the class can't be really asked in a question as a question so if you have just an exam oriented approach to things then you will not learn a lot of important things so you need to develop a feel for this to understand that how how uh, eyeball charts move okay so so essentially what we do what we have covered already we are doing a quick recap that is that um, we first look at we form a view when it comes to the buy sell decision we form a view on the underlying asset okay on microsoft we take microsoft as an example okay and whether we want we are bullish on this underlying asset price or we are bearish on the underlying asset price okay so we form that view first let's say i'm bullish on the underlying asset price okay so that means that i have again may have kind of to cut marks for you you're getting very distracted now that kanika is not there now you're uh, communicating with srishti you don't get distracted i don't want people to look at this and that so mehak will be a permanent member of the first bench from next time onwards and we will have to separate you from your buddy so mehak has already got she's scoring centuries in both innings now she's got this one also okay so what were i discussing uh i also get distracted okay so you first form a view on the underlying asset right and then you uh that that's not sufficient because if you have a let's say we have a bullish view on the underlying asset so then if i have a bullish view this is why this uh decision rule is uh, given to you okay so right so if you are bullish uh you can be long watch short watch that we can figure out okay we have the option position types you come here and you look at um if the directional view on uh okay so this is um, yeah we are here now okay so we have option trading rule number 2 okay uh that we have if directional view on the underlying market is bullish this is uh you buy calls or you sell puts is that clear everyone is clear about that Yes, yes, you don't seem convinced. You're clear. Okay. If you are uh, so we are recapping a little bit maybe we are already overdoing it. Okay, buy calls or sell puts, okay? And if your directional view is on the underlying market is bearish, you would buy puts or sell calls. Yeah. Can you explain me with an example what is sell calls like with an example how yeah. different from buy buy call okay so in this case say for instance we uh, let's say we look at the uh, let's take a look at the crude oil price you notice something interesting about the crude uh, this is the big spike yeah. after the I attack on the saudi oil facility let's look at six you see how funny the market behavior is yes. if there is such a risk and the us is still not retaliated that's all it went to okay this is all it went to this is why i keep telling you to follow markets because all your analysis may be correct at the end of the day you can't fight against the market you may have bought oil futures thinking that now the oil price is going to 100 but then at the at some point of time when the market keeps on dropping and you see this is where the market was when the news hit around the 55 dollars now you see where the price is okay so this is how funny the market is this is what i mean by the fact that this market is not really rational okay and you have no really really no way of figuring out how the market will react if there's good news will it react you know how well will it react how positive will it will the reaction be if there's bad news how negative will the reaction be so sometimes you'll find the market reacts uh, positively to bad news also okay sometimes it may not react to good news so it's you have to figure out the market you have to figure out your own way of navigating the market that's what you need to evolve uh, evolve a style for you need to evolve a strategy for dealing with the market when any kind of market actually not just equities not just commodities but currencies interest rates everything okay because at the end of the day in any finance role you will eventually have to take a view on markets 
even as a salesman when you're talking to customers you need to have a way of intelligently talking about the market and discussing the market okay so you can see this okay so this is this reminds me when i was when the first gulf war happened this is george h w bush when saddam hussein invaded kuwait you know those stories yes sir some of you know yes sir that basically that the 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 joke is that what does saddam hussein say when it gets very noisy the answer is kuwait please <laughs> because saddam hussein invaded kuwait one fine day he just invaded kuwait okay and the interesting thing was i'll tell you the story from my own uh, experience so at that time for some reason that uh, that was a holiday i was working on the amex foreign exchange trading desk at that time that was my first job this is the 19 this must have happened in 1990 or 91 okay early 91 or late 90 So some reason there was a holiday in Bombay and I happened to be in the trading room because I wanted to follow international markets. So suddenly that news came across the Reuters wire and I saw the dollar jump and it this reminds me of that same reaction. Oil price also jumped and the gold price also jumped when uh, Saddam had invaded Kuwait. And then within the same day this like took a few days this thing this movement within the same day by evening of the same day all those moves had been reversed. So initially on that news it jumped oil prices jumped gold prices jumped the dollar jumped and then by the evening of the same day everything had been reversed so this kind of reminds me of that kind of movement so very often you will find the market reacts in funny ways you know and so you there's no way to tell how how far up this will go and how far down this will come etc so that's why it's so important to follow markets that's why i give you these projects with real data real time data not simulation okay this is not a simulation so uh, so real time data so you get a feel for how markets actually move and then you also interpret the news flow you have to see the news flow as well right that this kind of news is coming out and how the market is reacting which basically tells you what we say in general terms in this kind of a situation if you look at how the market is reacting from if you look at the long term picture of the market of the oil market okay we are coming to your question okay coming to sakshi's uh, question you see what the long term picture on the oil market is now we are looking at about 5 years 6 years of data okay you see where the oil price is okay so now it's come all the way down here so it doesn't so this is considered to be in general okay you can never have absolute rules in the market this is one of the problems this is why i say it's not like physics but generally this is considered to be a bad this is considered to be a bad a bearish sign this is going to be taken as bearish price action because the fundamental picture is uh, i mean at least from the geopolitical risk factor point of view the <coughs> fundamental picture is actually bullish because there's a high risk of supply disruptions okay but in spite of that the price is falling which means the market obviously has a feel that there's a tremendous amount of supply and there's not enough demand okay so this this is something that this is how you would look at when the market reacts uh, in this way in a bearish way to what the news that the news, news that should be bullish okay that's me this means that there's a very bearish overhang in the market this is generally how the market would see it okay coming to sakshi's point now suppose i feel that this is where the price is let's let's uh, make this a little bit smaller now i have this picture 75 uh, 85 okay so suppose i'm bearish on the oil price okay and i want to sell calls what i would sell is basically let's say the price is around 52 60 so i would first go so remember these are oil so the most active for every market you have to figure out what is the most active instrument remember every market that we are looking at typically we are looking at a whenever you're looking at prices for any market those are always remember what i told you this is again one of those things that can't be examined in an exam but whenever you're looking at market prices anywhere those are always prices for some instrument okay like here the prices you see these are futures prices these are prices for futures contracts on oil these are not spot oil prices these are not forward oil prices these are not option prices for oil these are futures prices for oil okay so you can see the november 19 is 64 65 you can see the december 19 is little bit lower okay so here we say this curve we say the curve and this at least what we can see here this is in backwardation okay we learn these terms when we get into ifm and we look at the futures curve okay so the point is these are futures prices so now what i'm doing here i have to see uh, so i'm looking at futures options prices okay so let's say i'm i'm uh, i have a bearish view on oil okay i feel this is going to go through this level 50 level as well okay go and go towards 48 44 etc so if that's my view and i feel that 
there is going to go straight away okay so then let's say i'm willing to sell even a 55 call so this is 52 65 this is the november contract okay and this you have to find out where you look at the futures options and you look at make sure you know what is the underlying contract when you're trading futures options anytime when you're trading options you have to be clear about what the underlying contract is in a project like the one that you guys are doing this time which is a project on, on us equity options the underlying is very clear it's common U common equities okay us common equities or us etfs some of your underlyings are etfs like xlf is an etf financial sector etf gdx is an etf uh, qqq and spy are etfs okay some of our etf but effectively they trade like common stocks okay so these are spot equities spot equity for the contracts are your underlying in 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 your project here we are looking at the underlying being futures of these are futures options so the underlying is uh, futures contracts and you have to note with future because futures contracts can trade for different maturities okay so these decision problems you'll have even in trading futures which contract month should i trade in india you don't have that problem because you have only one month trading okay this is why you should not study finance with an indian market perspective because you will not understand the true picture with respect to all uh, all of the major instruments because the markets are not liquid here we see that the underlying futures contract is december okay so luckily there's not much of a price difference so let's say i'm willing to sell the 55 december call okay you understand the view now okay now i've not taken an eyeball view because it's kind of difficult to get i don't know the ticker for the eyeball charts for crude oil okay for crude oil options there should be a uh, ticker which will give us eyeball charts i can look for it here and see but i don't have um if i just look is there any crude oil ball index here cboe uh invesco cisf because i don't know the ticker volatility s p 500 cac 40 cac 40 is a french stock market no this is not working so i don't know the ticker i don't know the, i'm sure there's a ticker okay for uh, crude oil options we're looking for now i'm looking for the eyeball chart for crude oil options essentially i'm looking for something like this just like you have an eyeball chart for options on microsoft uh, common stock okay i was looking for an eyeball chart for um, for um, crude oil futures okay futures options on crude oil but that i don't know the ticker so i'm not able to find it out okay so let's assume that uh, my i have looked at such an eyeball chart because ideally what i have to are you following the logic is everyone following what i'm saying if you don't follow anything that i'm saying you please uh, please let me know okay because i can't look at everybody's face and be clear okay all right so uh, so what i should do logically is i form a bearish view on the underlying asset okay if i form a bearish view on the underlying asset i know that there are two things i can do i can sell calls or i can buy puts is that clear to everyone okay i can buy puts or sell calls okay now sakshi wants an example of selling calls how would i sell calls now typically now now we come to the second part of the decision okay so if i have a bearish view on the underlying asset i can either sell calls or i can buy puts but which of those two should i do now that answer is that clear that's again a decision problem i can either sell calls or i can buy puts okay uh, now i have to choose between those two all right so that second decision for that you need to look at the eyeball chart okay this is clear that's why we look at the eyeball chart so let's just pretend that uh, we are looking at this is the crude oil eyeball chart okay let's just pretend because i don't have the eyeball chart okay so then i let's say i form a view on this when i look at this eyeball chart and i form a view that even the eyeball is going to go lower it's going to go lower to around 15 percent or so right now it seems to be around 25 percent and even the crude oil eyeballs are going to drop okay so now i go to my matrix here now i go to my uh, decision matrix here which i actually need to move all the way to the left because this has a lot of other sheets which which you guys are not going to be using in this uh, course so let me move all this stuff here these are your option tickers okay so i think we have only one uh, to the okay we'll see uh, let's move to the didn't really move very well i tried to move it but it didn't move so now i come back to my option trading matrix 
Is this clear? So I formed a bearish view on the underlying assets so I can sell calls or buy puts. Then I come to the underlying option trade strategy matrix. Then I've, I've also formed a bearish view on the eyeball. So now the decision problem I had between selling calls or buying puts that I have solved because I have a bearish view on the eyeball, which means all option prices are likely to decline. Is that right? Is that okay? So all option prices are likely to decline. Then therefore I would not rather not buy puts. I would rather be selling calls because that is consistent with both my directional view on the underlying asset as well as the directional view on the eyeball. Is everyone following the logic? We are actually just recapping what we did in the previous class. Okay, so we have spent the first half hour recapping, but I think even now some of you are not clear with the logic. Are you following the logic? Yes, sir. Okay, so I have decided now to sell call. Now I'll give her the example that she's looking for. So my view on eyeball is bearish. My view on the underlying asset is bearish, which puts me here. But you should understand the logic why it's there. Don't just memorize the matrix. Okay, but you should understand why it is because your if your view on the eyeball is bearish, that means all option prices are likely to fall. Now, based on your underlying asset bearish view, you had a choice between either buying a put or selling a call. Now that choice, that decision problem you solved by choosing to sell a call rather than buying a put because the eyeball view is bearish. So the eyeball view comes in to solve that second problem. Is that clear? Okay. So now what I do is I go to my uh, option uh, trading, uh, the option trader. And let's say I have, I want to sell the 55 call, let's say. Okay. So I look at this and I maybe form an even shorter view with a 15, uh, we can form a 60, we can look at a 60 minute chart. Okay, so I feel that, okay, this 55 level, this 55 is where the, the, the market was roughly when the Iranian, uh, the Saudi oil strike uh, news came and hit the market. So maybe this will become an important resistance level right now. The market won't go above this. So I decide to sell the 55 call. Okay, now this helps me to, when I'm answering her question, this takes me to the next two decision problems that we have in options. Because remember, our decision problems are still not over. Okay, so let's take this example. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question that he, she's asked that helps us to take us move us a little bit forward from what we covered the, uh, in the previous class. Now having solved the decision problem of whether to what was the view on the underlying asset it was bearish. Okay, so I could either sell puts either I could buy either buy puts or sell calls. And then which one would I do? I solved that problem by taking a view on the eyeball chart. That view is also bearish. So I decide not to buy the put because option prices are going to fall. I decide rather to sell the call. Now are my decision problems over? What other decision problem do I have left? Yes. Is my question clear? What other decision problem do I have left? Yes. How many lots? Okay, that's a different. Uh, yeah, we'll come to that. We can, that's also a problem. But in this particular, that we already have as a separate problem. But in terms of buying and selling, we had one basic decision problem of buy sell. Okay, that decision at that level, we have now in the case of options, you see that there are it's can be split up into four different problems. In the case of simply when you are simply trading underlying assets which are which are not options, okay, like spot or few uh, spot in the case of spot, which is the simplest kind of instrument to trade, you have only one decision to make. Okay, you have a bearish view on Microsoft Common Stock, so you sell it. If you have a bullish view on the Microsoft Common Stock, you buy it. That's the end of that buy sell decision problem, right? But in the case of options, just on the buy sell aspect itself, we have a lot of sub problems. One problem was okay, fine, whether to buy or sell the underlying, whether your view on the underlying asset is bearish or bullish that takes you to one level you can either buy puts or sell calls then further you need to take a view on the eyeball so that's the first level of additional complication in the case of option trading okay but now my question is is the option at just at the buy sell your answer is not wrong uh, number of units also has to be decided but it's it's just not at the same level as the buy sell problem we are right now just dilating on the buy sell problem okay so uh, yes Shuchi, you had a point about this any other decision problem that we have to solve so correct expiry and strike so she's given us both the answers so we have two additional problems to decide okay the strike price and the expiry okay so the strike price decision so you can see that uh, if you want to sell crude oil options if you will come to the expiry later you can see there are so many strikes so which strike should i sell okay 
so that itself there is a view to be taken there okay so let's say i'll just quickly run through the uh, to, to to flesh out the fact that you have all these problems okay so you have to decide the strike price and in this case what i have done is i've taken partly a view on the underlying asset i looked at a particular level where the market was when this news came and now it's dropped through that level so i say it won't go above 55 okay so i take a view a technical view on the underlying asset i select a level and i decide to sell the 55 calls okay that's one one way of solving the problem 55 calls but i also have to decide the expiry okay so now typically here we have another rule that we have to look at now we'll introduce the other rule okay let's look at your session outline here okay so we have the additional problems okay of so i'm referring to certain uh, figures here please look at them now this is the ninth edition reference on the page number so that may not match in your exactly in your 10th edition but the figure numbers will match so just 11.1 means chapter 11 so just look at the figures to get a feel for what the option sensitivities are okay so now we have to look at uh, the uh, okay so uh, we will going to discuss this a little bit here before we get into the vega thread of tra theta trade off okay which expiry date to choose and which strike to choose okay these are your deci additional decision problems okay so you saw one way of choosing the strike okay which is the by taking a directional view on the on the underlying asset okay now the as far as the expiry is concerned i'll just briefly give you a quick summary answer to her question now typically what we want to do we'll show you the reason for that later okay is where the thumb rule is like this when you are selling options you want to be selling short dated options okay and when you are buying options you want to be buying longer dated options okay this is the basic thumb rule we'll explain the reason for that okay so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm not going to sell a 42 day option okay i'm going to rather be selling uh, i'm going to close i'm going to just collapse this what are the options we have we have only 13 days so i would rather be selling a 13 day option okay so now first is i'm going to go down so you see the first thing that i've done as far as the expiry question is concerned i'll we'll, we'll see the logic for this later on okay it's based on the theta because the theta is much higher for short dated options you remember what the theta is you forgot it what theta is time what time what gil is speaking so let's pre treasure this uh, moment and <laughs> let her let her ma make a contribution give her a mic give her a mic she has finally become involved in the class yes so theta yeah. basically means expiration to time expiration to time expiration of time yeah that's correct but that's not a good enough answer yeah Passage of time, what? Passage of time is happening all the time. Now also passage of time is happening. Garvid is looking at his watch and see watching the crowd. He's gone outside. So uh, passage of time, what is? that's not a good enough answer from a finance student. This is good enough for a, for a layman, maybe somebody who is selling something somewhere, marketing guy. But theta is passage of time is not good enough, a good enough an, uh, it's not a good enough answer from a finance student. You need to be more specific. Theta is negative for uh, like short uh, short positions and uh, short position in what? Theta is negative. You mean it? It's unfavorable. That's what you mean. Negative. So it will decline now. The time. What will decline? Time. Time, time will decline. Would be negative. No, no, but you're not able to express. I think maybe you know what your answer, but you're not able to answer. You're not expressing yourself properly. That's not good enough for a finance student. Anybody else wants to answer? Let's give it to Parul. What exactly is theta? We have already discussed it. You should be able to explain it clearly now. What exactly is theta? The time. Yeah. Time to expiration. Time to expiration is not theta. When you look at, if we go back to our option model, time to expiration is here. 
days to expiration it's a input in the OVM time to expiration is an input yes Rajan yes and sir theta is the rate of declining the value of the option uh, with, with the passage of time correct so that is the much better answer okay the theta shows you the rate of decline of the uh, is essentially it shows you the actually how much the uh, option will lose value how much value the option will lose okay with each day of the uh, that passes after the option is purchased okay this is clear simple answer with many of you were not able to click okay many of you maybe, maybe didn't even know it but both of you I think knew it but you're not expressing it correctly so Rajan's way of expressing it is much better much more precise it tells you what exactly so theta is basically the rate at which or you know it basically gives you a measure of the rate at which your option will lose value with each day that passes after you buy the option okay so if nothing happens and only time keep everything sits still all the interest rates and dividends and the stock price the underlying price everything sits still like it's frozen in time but time keeps passing every day then your theta measures the rate at which your option is going to keep on losing value so it's a wasting that's one of the reasons we say that options are a wasting asset this is clear have you understood this point so first you have to understand what theta means okay so we can already see that there are two people who have left the room at the same time both Garvid and Gulati have gone out together so door doorkeeper you have failed in your uh, duty doorkeeper is uh, Aurora. Aurora that's a way of keeping it <laughs> that's a way of keeping you awake otherwise he'll fall asleep he will also fall asleep okay Sir, yeah. Mike, 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 give her the mic. No, that's okay. Don't say she don't need it. She doesn't need it. <laughs> Your English community. I don't know if you are serious about getting jobs in the corporate world, but people will look at your spoken English and they will judge you. But I don't care whether it's fair or unfair. It may be fair, unfair, unjust, but that's life okay so you should be prepared take it to a level where it's not a problem right okay i hope you're not uh, offended or demotivated yes yes no i still see people coming and talking to other faculty in hindi your hindi doesn't need to be improved even people who have poor english are speaking in uh, hindi so how is your english going to improve yeah Sir, so my question, uh, not a question, but when we were doing option sensitivities, so we had written all these uh, uh, like uh, delta gamma. Now you can see it there on the screen. Right. So, uh, sir, in the notes, it was written that it is time to expiration time decay. That's why we all have written this. No, no. See, that's why I should not give you notes. <laughs> that's why I should not give you notes. You should understand. It may have been written. I'll just see what it is. I'll, I'll just see what is in your notes. Okay. That's why I don't want to give you notes. I would rather have you. Uh, follow the video make your own notes because in the video I'll never say anything like this I may have notes what happens sometimes is I copy from here paste it from here oh, okay so theta relates to time to expiration that that's not that, so I mean that's why I should not give you notes <laughs> that's why I should, <laughs> I should not give you notes I should not give you notes one minute uh, if you okay. don't have Is it little better now? Yes. Yes. Right. So that's why I don't want to give you notes because you're just blindly memorizing from the notes, and I'm not getting views, and I'm not becoming PewDiePie, <laughs> and then Tarun, Tarun will be held responsible. So that's that's going to become a problem. So I don't want to give you notes. I just want to give you the video, and then you can just read, watch the video, uh, and uh, make your own notes. That's how it should be. Yeah. So can you come to twenty-seven now? So you have also yeah see has a short long position now you were saying negative negative that's why I tried to find out 
negative means uh, loses value from passage of time okay so this also should have been mentioned that a short what this is what you were trying to talk about essentially that but your answer was actually wrong you said a short option position has negative theta actually a short option position has positive theta because these indications are shown I really should cut out your notes I should move into this and drastically edit out your notes so that you are able to follow so that you are able to follow only the video okay one minute now one minute but that's why you see the mistake is all these confusions happen because you're not following the video and then reading the notes with the video and creating your own notes you should first understand theta is time to expiration is that good enough for you I mean is that a good enough excellent if it's not clear then you should understand yeah. force yourself to understand what exactly theta is here uh, uh, this is a little bit more de text on theta this is so this statement is correct this statement actually what that meant was theta pointing to th time to expiration was that theta relates to time to expiration so theta relates to this input of time to expiration here what we are doing is in this this is just a shorthand way of writing now tomorrow if I ask you what is delta you'll say underline because the note it says they are delta relates to underline but hey, you can't you can't relate you can't uh, one minute so delta relates to underlying in the sense so here what we are trying to do is we are trying to relate the option Greeks to the inputs in the OVM in this particular segment of the note what we are trying to do is relate the option Greeks to the inputs in the OVM underlying is an input okay wall is an input okay time to expiration is an input and interest rate is an input so here I was just trying to say that rho relates to the interest rate now if I ask you rho don't say interest rate rho relates this is the schema here okay so uh, because I think I did not go in detail through the notes I just pasted the notes in I should probably just go de in detail through the notes okay and here also all the references you should read the references okay refer to your uh, and you can also refer to this I've given you a link also you should read this link to understand what if you had done all this then you would not have had this kind of confusion that theta is time to expiration okay all right so where were we okay here so here well let me just show you one chart then we'll come I'll paste that chart into your notes later on okay but let's look at something here yeah so first you have to understand what theta is okay all right let's make this a little smaller so that you can see the whole thing all right so why am I saying that why did you see me doing that when I was trying to answer Sakshi's question that I'll be selling a call and why did I move away from the 42 day options because I have decided to be a seller of options okay so the rule is when I'm selling options I don't want to be selling such a long dated options I want to be selling a short I this is the thumb rule first we give you the thumb rule and then we give you the logic behind the thumb rule okay so as a seller of options I that's why I moved away from the earlier uh, display which you saw was for the November December okay the 42 day options I don't want to be selling such a lot short dated a long dated option I, I, I was looking for preferably I would even have preferred to sell a seven day option but there is no seven day option trading right now the, the shortest we have is 13 days to expire so this is the shortest I can get so that's why I came here now why do we say that we want to be selling short dated options okay and when buying both of you had gone out at the same time Gulati and uh, and you went out after Garvid went I don't know who went out first that Garvid had gone out a long time ago I think Garvid has not come back okay fine sit sit so we'll have to penalize Garvid again <laughs> why has he again disappeared he just disappears seems to disappear from time to time so call him inside Okay, so so why do you disappear for such long periods of time? You're running some other business somewhere. <laughs> go, don't go out for such long periods of time. Everybody should be disciplined because when until you go out, nobody else can. Until you come back, no one else can go in. Okay, all right. So Aurora is a permanent door, uh, doorkeeper. Okay, you are. You, that's a way to keep you engaged in the class. Okay. So are you guys following the logic here? We are. We as a rule, we want to be selling short dated options. Okay. And in obviously, conversely, we'll be buying long dated options because we don't want to be caught buying short dated options. Why? Because the, the uh, because short dated options have very high theta. So first, you have to understand what theta is. Theta is essentially if you are long an option that's working against you 
okay if you are long an option theta is working against you look at these sensitivities here when you're looking at this where is that uh, option price here you notice what the theta sign is these are the sensitivities for uh, long option positions these sensitivities are for long option positions okay so this you can see what the sign of the theta is now we'll have to cut marks for Ganotra and uh, Tarun also smiling clacking jokes only I am allowed to crack jokes you are not allowed to crack jokes and my jokes nobody smiles so there's no risk so, uh, so Ganotra and Parul also will score some runs today not sorry Ganotra and Tarun okay so 410 I forgot to write Mayak's name These are all the stars. <laughs> One minute, please come back quickly so that he can go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ganotra uh, and uh, Tarun. Okay. All right. So, please don't. I don't want to catch anybody talking here, there, looking here, there. Please be. You have to be focused. Uh, just looking at me. Okay and uh, which all right so which which expiry date right now we are looking at expiry dates and we have evolved this rule which i will write down for you later not so much important to have the notes rather uh, we follow so remember that these so first you have to understand to understand the rule uh, as to why we want to be selling short dated options and buying longer dated options this is basically related to theta so you have to understand what theta is theta basically tells you the amount it gives you the measure of how much the option will lose value okay uh, if there is a unit change in the uh, in the time to expiration after you buy the option and after you buy the option time to expiration goes only one way so the change means it's only going to reduce okay so each day that passes after you buy the option okay if nothing else moves what happens to the value of the option how much does it fall by that is captured by theta so you notice that these are for long these sensitivities are for long option positions and you notice that both the puts and calls have negative theta can you see that so negative sometimes that's why i was pressing her on the word negative negative is still not good enough i want to know that i'm going to lose money or i'm going to make money i want it to be in that kind of term saying that uh, it's going to lose money so a long option position has negative theta whether it's a put or a call okay which means every day you hold on to the option and nothing happens the option loses value because of the theta okay so the theta here is what we are saying is short dated options have higher theta than long dated options you can capture this here here what you have is this okay so this is the chart that i want you to remember visually okay this is the plot of theta against time to expiration so what you do is you take a bunch of options you take options and you change the time to expiration and you plot the theta and you find that the theta the option the theta increases rapidly this is negative theta so it's increasing okay the axis it's the magnitude is increasing but on the negative side okay is everyone following this chart this is your typical xy axis chart okay but except that we are plotting mainly the negative side of the uh, the x axis right all right uh, yeah i always get confused between x axis and y axis uh, <laughs> anyway so the 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 vertical axis okay uh, so the vertical axis we are plotting only the negative side okay right so uh, so uh, we see here in this plot this is just a fact okay if you do this exercise you plot you can create your own chart like this if you do an exercise you take that option pricing option valuation model and you keep entering keep changing the time to expiration and you see what the value of the theta is you'll see that the theta is very sharply negative for short dated options okay and for longer dated option the theta is not so sharply negative it is still negative but so the, the basic the intuitive and understanding of this graph is that if you buy a longer dated option okay uh, then for each day that passes with no movement at all the loss in value of that option is much less compared to what would be happening in similar circumstances to a short dated option is this clear to everyone make sure you understand this clearly okay so first you have to understand what theta is theta captures the uh, loss of value of the option per unit uh, reduction in the time to expiration okay 
and so and the other rule that we have is this is just based on a fact okay because of the way the OVM is structured okay that uh, as the option as the time to expiration keeps dropping the theta really grows really big okay so for short dated options the theta is much higher than it is for longer dated options okay the magnitude of theta because still theta is always representing the loss in value for one day reduction in time to expiration but the magnitude of that reduction will be much higher when you are plotting it for a short dated option is this clear we can see one example here we should understand this logic very clearly okay that let's say right now somebody note down the theta for the call option minus 0 0.05 okay so let's make it really short let's cut it by let us take it to three okay three days to go 30 days to through uh, go it was minus 0 0.05 now you see this three days to go the option price basically uh, with one day further now what did we say are uh, three days to, no where did i uh, three days to go yeah okay so you can see how theta has gone up very sharply it is much more sharply negative okay the magnitude of the the absolute value of that uh, number is much higher okay so this is what is meant by uh, short dated options having much higher theta than longer dated options so that's why we have a further refinement of option trading as uh, uh, should you mentioned there are two more problems we have to solve expiration date and strike price so i'm coming to the second of those two problems right now which is the expiration date i have decided to be a seller of options okay because of my view on eyeball now i come to the second rule that if i want to uh, uh, the subsequent rule that if i want to be a seller of options i should be pushing myself towards selling shorter dated options because then i'll have higher theta do you understand the logic in this you understand the 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 motivation here that you want to make money obviously right so here what will happen is as a seller of option remember i'm a seller of options okay so if these are for these sensitivities are for long option positions now if i if i'm a seller of options my position is short now what will happen to the sign of the theta for me no these sensitivities are plotted for these are being shown for long option positions implicit okay it's implicitly for long option position now if my option well i'm trying to sell calls so when i do it my option position will be short so for me what will be the sign of the theta it will be positive okay because i have sold the option now what i really want to have ideally is when and this is also gives you the idea of what an option seller really wants and an option this will connect you later on to the idea of gamma as well which we're not going to do in great detail but ideally what i want as an option seller as an option seller ideally what i want is that generally uh, without reference to the direction part okay if i'm selling both puts and calls okay if i'm just bearish on eyeball what i really want is that things should just collapse like everything should just go dead okay it's like the market is on holiday so the spot doesn't move nothing moves okay and but time will always pass nothing moves but time will always pass so essentially every day i'm picking up money like here every day i'm picking up 16 cents right if i'm a seller of the option this will just become a positive sign but the magnitude will not change so because the buyer of the option has negative theta the seller of the option has a positive theta profile okay but similarly the seller of the option has negative on all these others delta gamma vega is negative for him okay rho is also negative for the the call option seller okay so you can see this so so the, the, there's a flip side to it there's a trade-off involved everywhere okay so is this clear to everybody that these are given so theta is negative these are shown for long option positions by default okay so therefore if you're a seller of options your theta is actually positive so what you are do, what you want as a seller of options is you want everything to go quiet after you sold the option and so every day time will just pass and you'll keep on earning some money because whatever you sold is going to keep on losing value and that's what we want basically whatever we have sold that should keep on losing value whatever we bought that should keep on increasing in value is this clear the logic is very clear okay so basically as option sellers we want to see not a lot of movement after we sold the option we want everything to basically just go dead and so that we can keep enjoying the theta every day we can keep eating the theta every day is this clear everyone is clear about this logic yes Shurbi doesn't seem convinced you're convinced okay so now we understand 
that so we have seen clearly for sand that uh, by playing with the ovm we have seen that shorter dated options have much higher theta which is what basically this plot is okay we can just take this uh, and put it into your notes I'll write the part later on but this is what you have okay so you can see it here this is basically visually you remember this okay that as you get to expiration it the the graph drops very sharply because as you get to shorter dated options the theta increases quite sharply so ideally you want to be selling a shorter dated option and that will very quickly lose value okay this is clear okay so the other way to choose now so the decision about the expiration date is clear to us now we want to be selling shorter dated options so by uh, uh, by the reverse logic we want to be buying longer dated options because how will that help us remember if i buy a longer dated option we'll discuss this further when we get to the vega theta trade off okay which is if i buy a longer dated option what is happening is that uh, uh, i have a lot more time in the sense i'm not losing that much uh, you know uh, value every day if there's no movement then i'm not losing that much value every day because i really don't want to be buying a short dated option because every day this dro dropping sharply in value right it's like a basically it's just like you think of it if you're buying a house with uh, fully funded by debt you would rather have a housing loan where the interest rate is lower than one which is higher because if it's a higher interest rate then every day you have to be earning more on rent okay to make up for that so it's just a uh, it's kind of similar to that kind of logic so you really want to buy a longer dated option so those one part is clear so this is based on an understanding of theta okay now we come to the second point which is the uh, second decision that has to be solved which is the decision problem on which strike to choose okay so one way i showed you one way you can choose the strike is by reference to underlying views okay the views on the underlying asset price which is what we did was in this case i took a view on the underlying asset price because i'm selling a call and i looked at where the market was okay uh, when the this uh, news on the uh, of the strike on the oil fields came and i saw that the market has eventually moved back below that so i'm saying that around 55 the market is unlikely to get above 55 okay and therefore i just select a point on the underlying asset price chart i take a view and i i decide to sell the 55 calls okay so that's one is one way of doing it which is if we do it this way okay which is i'll just put it here which is by So you understood this way of doing it? How do I choose the strike? I choose 55 because I think because I'm selling a call. So understand this logic. This also this is uh, a slightly inferior kind of logic, but even this you should understand. Okay, that uh, why am I choosing 55? Because I my view is when I look at the underlying asset. Because what is what am I selling? If I'm selling a 55 call, I'm giving somebody the right to buy uh, oil at. Uh, the November futures contract or that this is on the December contract uh, the December contract at 55 okay but my view based on the chart is that the December contract is very unlikely to ever go above 55 so if it ever never goes above 55 the whoever has bought the 55 call he'll never want to exercise it because as a seller of options what do I want I don't want the option to be exercised is that clear to everyone the insurance company who is selling you car insurance what they ideally want is that there should be no accidents okay and nobody will uh, claim their car insurance so that way they get to pocket the premium all the premium goes in their pocket they don't have to uh, sort of uh, satisfy any claims this is clear remember insurance companies are just sellers of options so you can always keep this comparison between insurance and options okay so the insurance company is selling uh, options okay and therefore they are collecting the premium because when you buy an option you have to pay the premium so this price premium that you see here the option price is referred to as the premium okay so whenever you buy an option you have to pay a premium that premium goes straight into the pocket of the insurance company usually they are paid up front okay sometimes you can arrange it in different ways but most of the time we pay the premium up front so ideally what the insurance company wants is no car accidents at all so that nobody files a claim and they don't have to pay out they don't have to pay out anything so all the premium goes into their profit 
okay like at least a gross profit okay then they have to take care of expenses and stuff but uh, this is the logic okay so as an option seller what i want is that whatever would cause the option to be exercised yeah, we can draw we can use this kind of general language to draw a parallel between car insurance and this kind of selling options on securities okay so when i'm selling options at 55 strike what i want why am i choosing the 55 strike because i think the market is unlikely to ever get above 55 so if i'm selling a 55 call and the market is unlikely to get above 55 whoever buys the 55 call will never want to exercise it because why would he exercise an option to buy at 55 if the market is always going to be below 55 he would rather be buying at market is this clear are you following the logic yes okay so as an option seller this is one way i can choose the strike which is i can choose a with respect to by being forming a view on the underlying asset this is clear that i i would sell the option which uh, which i think where the strike is such that based on the view of the underlying asset is uh, unlikely to ever get exercised and you should be able to see the parallel between that and say somebody selling an uh, insurance company selling fire insurance because they don't want any fires so they'll just collect the fire insurance premium and there will be no claims this is clear okay so that's one way of choosing the uh, strike price on the uh, uh for the option that you're going to sell okay or the option you want to buy the same logic will apply now there's another way of doing it which is actually uh, theoretically the more correct method okay which is by reference to eyeballs this is one of the reasons why we use this kind of software which is very sophisticated you will not find this kind of display in most other pieces of software i don't know if you guys are any of you are using those of you who are using indian software smc and all see if your option views when you mouse over, do you get the bid offer spread on eyeballs? You don't have options access. Okay. So anyway, the options you will find, of course, that the expiration dates are very limited. These are basically just one, I mean, front month expiration. Here you see many option maturities trading. In international markets, you will see many option maturities trading. In India, typically, there'll be only a, like a one month or a three month kind of contract. Okay. And just the front contract is trading and the other contracts don't have liquidity it's because the market is not liquid okay so in a proper market you'll see you can see how many expirations exist can you see that just in the crude oil market and they've given you the eyeballs for each of those okay average eyeballs they have given for each of those okay can you see that yes. so this is around 36 percent ball here you can see these uh, these are very long dated you see how many days these are these are i think 439 more than one year these balls are quite low but these are not actively traded also that's the other problem okay that's one of the reasons maybe the balls are low okay so you can see this uh, you can see the 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 uh, number of options that trade we are going to go back to our 13 day uh, period because i am going to be selling very short dated options okay so this is one of the reasons as i said we use this software because in a good option trading so in good option trading software you should be able to see this much detail can you see for the 55 call i wanted to sell can you see there's a difference in the bid offer eyeballs first of all the bid offer is 56 59 and you can see the eyeball also what you can't see the eyeball what is the eyeball 35.47 okay so what did we see the other day when we looked at the understanding of eyeball the intuitive understanding of eyeball if the eyeball value is higher the ovm output will be also the price will be higher right so you can see is that consistent here here the price is 56 and the eyeball is 35.47 is it consistent with our view with the logic yes or no is my question clear no. i think many people have not understood my question also what did we say here we said that the first of all what did how do you define now don't look at the notes and figure out something in the notes and say what eyeball is what did we say what eyeball is eyeball is basically the input into the wall into the ovm anybody wants to mention or complete the answer eyeball is the input into the ovm ovm is a model so it has inputs and outputs okay and it is a mathematical relationship which you can't see now because this is a black box model they have just shown it to you okay you understand what black box models are this is another term that you should learn black box models 
because many of you are going to do stuff like machine learning and all like people were talking about data mining and Anjum submitted a project report a project draft where she had already given the conclusions of the project <laughs> you are just copied from the internet somewhere and just given the conclusion in the abstract itself that the research shows that this doesn't work or whatever so but data mining she wanted to do data mining machine learning and all that so one example is of neural network machine learning is a modern name for neural networks so these are black box approaches black box approaches means it gives you an output it tells you what to do a black box trading system will tell you what to do by yourself but you can't see the logic okay why is the system telling me to buy why is the system telling me to sell that you will not be able to see okay so you don't get to see the structure of the model why have they come to see uh, why are they recommending a buy why are they recommending a sell so this is something that happens with uh, these machine learning neural network systems because the system learns on its own but the system does not show you the uh, the reason for which it gives gives the output okay so this is called a black box system where you get an answer you get a decision you can buy you can sell okay or you should buy or you should sell but you don't you never get to know the logic the reasoning the reasoning behind the system coming out with that kind of an answer okay so many people are happy with black box system that's fine but if you're not happy then you that's not a right kind of approach for you if you want to know the logic then it's not the right kind of system. so you have to understand these terms okay so we are ex express we are using a term called black box system so I'll just write it down as a thing so these are black box systems so this is if effectively presented you uh, uh, black box decision models okay we can just call it uh, okay black box decision model where you don't get to know the answer okay uh, you, you you get to know the answer but you don't get to know how the answer was arrived at okay so uh, unless unlike say if I give you a model as y is equal to b a plus b x and I tell you that x is x, value of x is so and so value of a and b is so and so therefore the value of y is so and so here you can see why I am predicting this value for y because you can see the structure of the model okay here so this is not in a black box decision models you will not be able to see not you will not be able to see the decision making logic okay why it came out with that answer now what was I talking about okay so this is effectively in, in theory of course we know that the option trade if you look at the uh, formulation it comes out of a partial differential equation okay the option valuation model the black shows model etc the black shows Merton Merton model so the black shows option pricing model per se is not black box but here it's presented to you like a black box model because you can't see the working of it okay you can't see the working It's just telling you that if these are the inputs then this will be the output you don't see the the, the structure of the model it's not being shown to you here okay but in fact there is a structure so this is a fair appearing like a black box model because it's just giving you an output without telling you showing you the reasoning behind that particular output okay but uh, so you can use this as an opportunity to learn this new term which is black box models okay so uh, and so what was I saying yeah so eyeballs I was talking about eyeballs so what is eyeball does anyone remember the intuitive understanding of eyeball or the mechanical understand sorry intuitive understanding is that eyeball is just a measure of option prices or index of option prices so if eyeball chart if the eyeball chart is rising here if eyeball chart is if the eyeball chart is rising means that option prices are becoming more expensive when the eyeball chart is falling okay that means here like the eyeball chart is falling option prices are losing value in general both calls and puts so that's the intuitive first level understanding of eyeball now the mechanical understanding of eyeball what did we say do you remember? Yeah, okay, that's not incorrect. That's not incorrect. But mechanically, what did I say? What would what do we want to remember? Eyeball. These things you should remember because once you do this and once you revise it, yes. Yeah, these are all just you are just taking out words from the notes. It's not wrong. Okay, it's reflecting the cheapness and dearness of options because when eyeball goes up the eyeball chart is going up that means options are becoming more expensive when the eyeball chart is dropping that means options are becoming less expensive okay so this is why maybe it's further uh, cementing my uh, decision to not give you the notes because then you're not really learning it properly you're just mechanically studying what is in the notes so this has been clearly mentioned in your notes that uh, and we discussed it in detail also we saw the example so the eyeball is the wall input into the OVM which produces an output which is equal to the market price what is so complicated about this 
don't memorize it or write it just understand conceptually once you understand conceptually you'll never forget it i want the ovm is a fair value model okay so it has nothing to do with the market it per se has nothing to do with the market price a fair value model just like i was giving you an example of your senior who came up with a fair value of some stock at 14 dollars or 17 dollars and the stock is trading in the market at 414 dollars so the fair value because you arrived at it because by projecting certain for the future earnings etc okay and therefore the fair value model output need not have anything to do with what's going on in the market because the market is just adjusting to price supply supply demand supply demand there's more demand price moves up less demand price goes down market is just absorbing and uh, reflecting the pr supply demand pressures okay whereas a fair value model you're actually just taking a bunch of inputs which are subjective most of the time okay uh, and uh, trying to project a fair value calculate a fair value for so these two things need not be related per se okay because the process by which you're arriving at them are quite different okay but what you can do is you can look at a fair value model and try to say that if the market is using this fair value model and if the market price is equal to some the market's fair value model output then what is the because the only mod in the ovm the only major confusion is with respect to the vol this is a real major uncertainty nobody knows what the vol is actually going to be okay so you came out with certain values for vol and so we saw that suppose the option price was three dollars so our vol input is 25 that's not good enough how do i get to an option price of three dollars maybe if i put 50 what happens to the call option not good enough so i have to make it maybe even higher make it 70 so still i need to make it even higher so you get the picture i'll keep on increasing the ball input until i get a model output which is equal to the market price so remember a fair value model output and a market price first you have to understand this clearly these need not have anything to do with each other per se okay they need not have anything to do with each other because they are arrived at by totally different processes market is just uh, adjusting supply demand people are buying people are selling and through that the market price is getting determined okay through the supply demand pressure whereas a fair value model is quite divorced from the market it's just inputting certain uh, inputs uh, subjective inputs mostly okay all fair value models are not subjective the arbitrage free valuation model will not be subjective but these are some this is a subjective model okay where the inputs are subjective you are inputting some figures and you are getting a model output that need not have now if you wanted to match the two if you wanted to match your model output to the market price what would the if you assume that the market is also valuing it at fair value okay then in that case what is the input ball input that the market is using to arrive at this kind of a price for the option which you assume is equal to the fair value okay the market is assuming you assume the market is using a fair value model okay so in that case this 75 will obviously have to make it even bigger than that to get to three eventually but you get the picture so this part should be clear to everybody we have already explained it before okay so what does that mean it means basically that uh, and remember how eyeball is derived eyeball is derived by looking at the understand the process okay you look at the market price okay you look at the market price and you input that uh, you keep on uh, and you take a ovm okay and you keep on fiddling with the wall input into the ovm until it gives you an output which is equal to the market price you keep on changing the wall input until you get a model output because this remember this model output need not have anything to do with the market price see remember these are market prices these are tradable market prices this 59 62 these are tradable market prices okay how are these prices arrived at people are buying people are selling there is buying spying pressure selling pressure and based on the current buying selling pressure this is where the market is now some if there's some massive buy order on the 55 calls the price might shoot up to 65 cents okay and if there is another massive buy order then the price might shoot up to 75 cents okay so this is how price is determined okay now what is eyeball eyeball is basically just assuming that if the price is equal to fair value okay if the price is equal to fair value all the time then what wall input is the market using to arrive at that fair value at, at, at uh, to basically arrive at that price equal to fair value this is clear you don't go back and think about it and understand it maybe watch the video again and understand it so the bottom line is that 
so if we go back to the first intuitive understanding of uh, options also okay maybe i've made it more complicated but it's very clear that you guys have not understood this mechanical uh, point of uh, eyeball which we have already covered that's why you have to keep revising and understanding this okay so the bottom line is that higher eyeballs means higher uh, option prices okay higher eyeball means higher option prices okay this you can see straight away from here everything here is the same everything here is the same except that this is the bid and this is the offer so what do we know from market maker logic the bid will be higher than the offer or lower than the offer yes is the bid going to be higher or lower than the offer in any market has to be always lower because market makers will want to make the bid offer spread as a profit so what do we see here everything about this option is the same only that one this is the bid and this is the offer expiration is same strike is same everything is the same but this is 59 and this is 62 and what is the eyeball for 62 36.4 and what is the eyeball for 35.4 so you can see that this one has higher eyeball yes. so higher eyeball means higher prices this is what i'm trying to show it's a simple point we could have just used Barul's point that cheapness and dearness of options okay but we have to go for we should go through it's good that we went through a long the convoluted route because we found out that people are still not clear about the mechanical understanding of eyeball okay you need to make sure the these are all conceptual things this is if you lay your conceptual foundations properly later on you can go into industry and study more detail techniques and all i'm not worried you can learn monte carlo simulation on your own but conceptual clarity and you will not find this kind of explanation in any of the books so you have to understand it in the class so that it lays your theoretical foundation strong uh, in a strong manner right so the other way what were we trying to solve what is the decision problem you can you we were trying to solve which strike to choose so one method you saw by reference to underlying asset price views the second method is buy eyeball we'll just call it buy eyeball what is buy eyeball we already know higher eyeball means higher prices so if i'm a buyer do i want to buy more expensive or less expensive i want to be like buy less expensive and what is the index of the uh, of option prices what do i look at to figure out whether option prices are more expensive or less expensive eyeball okay so this is another intuitive another counterintuitive thing that you're learning which is that when you are trying to determine whether a certain option price is cheaper or more expensive you don't look at this part oh the 128 is more expensive than the 0.6 okay you don't look at it like this these are the option premia okay these are the option premia 127 132 88 92 these are option premia okay is this clear pay attention don't get restless just because we are uh, approaching the end of the class okay it doesn't matter i'll just take one point and uh, two minutes and uh, clarify this important point so very important rule you do not determine which option is more expensive by looking at the absolute levels of the option premia which is here you can see this these are the option premia everybody knows what option premia is option prices yes. you determine which option is more expensive by looking at the eyeball associated with that option price that's why this kind of software is important because it tells you i'm i'm a buyer i'm a seller so i'm only interested in the bids yes. i'm a seller of calls now which call shall i set i i've already set the expiration which strike call should i set sell so if i'm selling i'm only looking at the bids so i'm going to go through all the bids it's 35.47 34 so this is better for me if i'm a seller i want to sell higher or lower higher, higher. higher. so i'm going to go through this whole list of bids for different strikes and find me the highest eyeball 35.47 so far is the highest 34 34 34 35.345 35.76 this is a little higher yeah. but this becomes a in the money call okay so i may have some reason not for selling it for not selling it in the money call okay so uh, but you can also sell it but the basic logic if you observe forget about that so i will hunt through this list and find myself the so i can see those deep in the money calls actually have the highest eyeball so really i should be selling the 36 i should be selling the 50.5 call 
okay this will have some other calc but at least let's get this logic very clear how do i decide which strike to sell the more intelligent method actually one is what i showed you underlying asset price views the more intelligent approach is to look at the eyeballs associated with the option prices for that you need this kind of software okay and then you sell the basic logic is very simple i will sell the option with the highest eyeball this is clear please understand this i will buy the option with the lowest eyeball yes people have not understood <laughs> we'll continue this in the next class please please go over and think about it watch the at least the last part of the video watch at least that and and understand this very important piece of learning option prices whether it's more expensive or less expensive you do not decide by looking at the absolute level of the option premium you look at the eyeballs associated with those premium that's why you need this kind of software this is clear yes. you learned some important things today okay so we have now solved four of our decision problems okay buy call sell call you decide buy call buy put sell call sell call then whether to buy or to sell you've decided now which expiry you've decided by theta and then by eyeball logic you've decided which strike to choose this is clear so now you can start practice your stuff starts from next week i have still not received messages from all the groups what is going to be i better get it by this saturday rajan has sent it but you need to clarify which is for your huh? but which is the project trading one sec you mentioned it which is for project trading please check your emails the ones that you have sent to me you should have clearly indicated which id is going to be used for your fdrm project is that clear please check it any technical question no technical question lunch time no technical question